Hi everyone, welcome to In the Studio with Kelly Hernig. Today I've got a fun one for you. Are you ready? A concertina sketchbook. I know, so fun, right? I am having a blast creating in this and I'm going to share the inspiration behind my paintings so that you can get inspired to start one of your own. Are you ready? Let's go get inspired. I wanted to share this beautiful floral book with you. I bought this as soon as it came out because of the floral structure in it. This is The Flower Hunter by Lucy Hunter. Now she has two books coming out. I am waiting for the other one. This is her first one. So this is seasonal flowers inspired by nature and gathered from the garden. When I am flipping through this, I want to show you how I'm kind of using it for inspiration, but I want to also let you kind of see the book because it is a gorgeous book. The photography is amazing. <laughs> Look at this little still life here. Isn't that beautiful? So this book is full of little bitty things like this that you are, you, that you discover and that you just look at and you're like, how did she come up with that? <laughs> at least that's what I do because I love the simplicity, but I love the way that she uses vintage items as well. So the vintage book, the vintage ribbon, it's just lovely. And what I want you to see in this book is a lot of her floral arrangements are longer or more horizontal than they are vertical. And I really like that. I haven't seen that in too many places. So I was really struck by the horizontalness of it and how much space it took. So this is the urn, but yeah, look how much it is how much floral space. Instead of going up, it goes long. And I was really intrigued by that. I love, she's got a couple artist vignettes in here. Isn't that gorgeous? And my lights are not cooperating. This is her, she painted backdrops. She paints a lot of the backdrops that are behind her flowers. And I just really, really love that. Maybe that's a little better. I put a book behind here. So look at the colors. Look at the floral here. Gorgeous. Look at the page. It's just filled with beauty and wonder and amazement for me. I'm just like, wow. Again the vert horizontalness of it. But I want to show you some more of her beautiful, I mean, look at that. Who wouldn't want this in their home? I would. <laughs> I love this one. I love the big fat pot and then these just all leaning towards you. Do you see what a beautiful design and movement that is? It just really captures my attention. But look at this, just green and white. Isn't that gorgeous? Here's some. Look at this one. So do you see how much movement? She's got a real tall area here, then just you can follow it down and then she's got all these ribbons and a little bit of lace down here. So if you just follow that down, you discover all this little stuff down here. I love that. She talks about creating florals. Look at that. Look at that. Again, she's got like the chair rail and then she busts it with all of her flowers. I mean, look what the majority of her flowers are in this horizontal band. But then she lets some of them be free up here. And I love, she's always got stuff laying down here too, which totally intrigues me. Look at that. Here's one. This one, when I saw this picture, it almost made me gasp. I mean, I was holding my breath through this book because it just kept exciting me. And now this is what excites me. It's like dark and light, yet it's airy with the flowers. And of course, these are more autumnal colors, which is really my color palette. I love the darkness of it. But look, it's a box with an urn with a chair rail in the back, and then these flowers going this way. She's got big leaves. She's got some apples, some gourds down here, and then all of this just crepe fabric down there. And 
white roses in the middle here. So when you're looking at it, you see all the yellows, but then you come closer. There's some pinks, there's some darker pinks. There's this white, and I'm just totally enthralled by that. Look at that. She talks about drying flowers. She talks about dyeing fabric. This is making journals with natural ingredients here. And she makes this fabric journal for you. So you can follow along in all of these little descriptions and just look how gorgeous they are. And then she actually uses some of these in her setups, which I think is just beautiful. I love everything about this page. I love the texture and I just want to feel everything <laughs> because it's like, what do those roses feel like? Are they dried or are they still subtle? Is this tapestry? Is it hard fabric, soft fabric? What is it? The paper? I just want to, I really just want to touch it all. I love texture. So again, look at this setup, how she does it. It's just like an old world feel, but yet in a fresh take. And I really appreciate that. So I'm going to show you how I am using this book. Again, this was by Lucy Hunter called The Flower Hunter. I recently bought this concertina book and it comes in a case, which is really cool. See that? It's A4 size. It's big. Because I'm experimenting, remember I'm experimenting with layers and I'm trying to be a little freer. If you don't want to know what a concertina concertina book is it's a book that's like a giant accordion it just keeps going and going and going okay so that is what a concertina book is so when I first got this I just put something here to make it not precious anymore I found a picture that I loved a quote that I loved and I just put it down this is from my 24 palette which I have videos on about it and I just was playing around with it and I wanted it here on the front cover now the first thing that I did, I don't know if you remember that first picture in the Flower Hunter book that I showed you up close. This one. See that? Now I want you to take a good look at it. And you can see that it's a box, it's a ribbon, and then there's a pot, and then there's some flowers. So this was my inspiration. And this is what I did for mine. So I did a box, a ribbon, Instead of a vase and flowers, I did a vintage box with a lid that was for tires. <laughs> and then I did florals. And then I took one of my statues that I have and I included it here. So from this to this. I love the colors here. So that dictated what colors I was going to choose to use this. And you can see that I kind of connected it to the ribbon. And then I went deeper here so that the little bird would stand out. And then I'm adding quotes and stuff in here too. So I'm trying to figure out how to connect the pages. This is my first concertina book. The pages are big. So I'm trying to navigate that as well. And mostly I paint small. So having something this large was a bit overwhelming, but I'm like, I can do this. <laughs> so I just put it here in the page, right? And then I'm like, okay, let me pull something out this way. And then let me pull something out this way. So as I turn the page here, got to make more room. <laughs> you can see that the leaves, I actually pulled them all the way over. Here's the crease of the page right here. That's where the page ends. So I left just a little bit of the leaf coming through. And then I had to go back to my oak leaves <laughs> here and here because they are my comfort zone, but I let them mimic the color here because I'm trying to make each kind of page work with within one another. So have common threads, common colors, so one goes to the next kind of thing. This was a palette that I, that I bought from Ocean Paper and it was just such beautiful colors that I put it on here. And then I went around and I touched some of these colors in here and in the next page as well, so that they kind of morph into one another. And here I added another quote around the branch and you could see that nature is very important to me. So I'm trying to have nature on every piece of page if I can. So as we go here, this now, this little page, I've got her pages next to it. It says index. 
So let me go to her index page. And here you'll find it. So look at this gorgeous flower. So do you see the shape there? And I love the little leaf. See the little leaf curling up right there? So what I did is I took this as my inspiration and I created this. Now I did it in my own style, but I did use her magenta color there. And because I had it here on my paints, <laughs> I thought that would be a nice way to tie that in. And then this is a vase that I have in my studio. And I just really liked it for the simplicity because I don't want you to notice it first. I want you to see the flower first. So had I done this in a magenta or the darkness around the center of this flower here, you would have noticed this first. And I didn't want that. I wanted you to go from Let's see if I can get this to show here. <laughs> the problem of a concertina. I wanted you to go from this color to up here. That's where I wanted you to go. And you can see I achieved that just by the color. But imagine if this was dark red. That definitely would have pulled your focus, and I didn't want that. So we've got this, and then the leaf kind of, the stem kind of leads you down, and this little hook guy kind of makes you look at him. And then I've got soft berries to continue this peachy color from the cover. Let's move around here. And you can see that I continued the berries onto this page. Again, just a little bit is on the next page. And then this page, I really wanted to focus on the greenery here. This is page 19. This, it just says Fritillaria, but I love this. I loved, I actually loved this because of the greenery here. And I thought the white would be cool getting lost in the page. So that is exactly what I did. I drew the stem line where I wanted it first, the giant stem. Then I drew the flowers because I knew I wanted them down here. Remember, I'm up here brought you down to the berries and notice the berries kind of point you back upward towards the greenery here. And then I put a giant quote in the middle here. And I just really like it because part of my design aesthetic as an artist is I want you to come closer. I want to pull you closer to see all my details so that it looks one way from far away, but then you come up and you notice the flowers and you notice these little yellow stamen, and then you notice the writing here, then you notice this big letter here. That's what I want to do. I want to kind of pull you in. So let me show you up close. So do you see the flowers and then there's the writing? And then from there, <laughs> Again, I wanted to do some colors. So the first two are the green from here, and then the next two are coming onto the next page. So you can see a little bit of the page is busting through here. And notice between these two pages, I've got berries here, and I've got berries here. These berries kind of point up, and then, you know, this comes straight across. So I wanted it to hit a berry. So it's part of the design there. It just kind of curves your eye up. And then on this page, you can see I put the greenery down here on the basket or under the pot. This is a pot that I just bought. It's uh, from an antique shop and I liked it that it looked all decayed and kind of crumbling at the top. And I don't know if you noticed either that I'm using graphite in here. I'm using colored pencils and water soluble pencils and then watercolor. Those are my mediums here. So I've got some that are drawn in colored pencils. I've got everything that is drawn first in pencil. I'm trying to leave the pencil lines as well. I like seeing those marks. So this was from page 43. It is these little berries. <laughs> I liked the color. I liked that they were kind of spread out I like that there was like an orange, a yellow, and so there were some really dark ones. I didn't do the really dark ones. Um, and then there were some highlights on them, very bright highlights in there. Let's see if I can get you real close to them. 
again. Now look how big this is and look what I notice on the page. Those little tiny things right here. <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm loving her details. So that is where these berries came from. And I just liked them. I liked having this little branch fall to the ground because, you know, she's got all that stuff laying on the table. And for me, that's like goodness to discover. So I like that you see them up here with all the white, but these are less noticeable next to the green. And these are the colors that I used in the berries. From there, we head into this page. Let's see if I can get you to see this page here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> So from, from this one, we go into this. Now, I really wanted a flower hanging down. And this is from page, oh, it's the same page, page 43. So here's the berries. Here is the flower. See the flower, but look at the leaves, how they tangle down. So the flower is there, and then you've got these clusters of leaves pointing downward. So I liked that these were pointing at it, and then this was kind of pointing down. So... What I did here was my berries are here, my flower is here, and I just stuck it at the top. I knew I wanted it really far at the top edge, you can see, and then I wanted those leaves coming down. Now I changed the leaves and made them into my kind of leaves instead of really fat leaves. Then to connect the space between these two, what I did was I took the yellow from this page here with the yellow leaves, and then I took the green from this area here and I made giant circles. So I just took a compass and made some big circles. I actually have three circles here. And I did a yellow one here, a green one here, and then this is kind of the darker color here. And I really like the way that that looked. It's just something that pulls me in because it gives me air, but yet there is something there when you come lo looking closer. And then I've got a little quote here. And again, the yellow is the center, which ties back to these leaves, which ties back to this little circle here. So you can see that I'm just really having fun with this. I am looking at the book for new inspiration and it's been really wonderful for me experimenting. And what I love too is that it's taking the paper really nice in the paint. I mean, I'm about halfway through and you can see that it's not real buckled. Now my washes are very light, you know, they're not real heavy, but I'm enjoying using the mixed media aspect of it with the graphite and the, and the colored pencils as well, and watercolor pencils. So I hope that me showing you this today makes you look at your bookcase and your books on your shelves a little differently because this is the art of practice for me. This is using my sketchbooks and figuring things out and trying to get comfortable in just about anything that I want to do. I've seen all of these people with concertina books and I was like, wow, that just looks so intriguing. But at the same time, it was scary to me. You know, that's a lot of continuous work. How am I going to do that? So figuring it out and playing in my first concertina book is really, really exciting for me. In fact, I just ordered three more because I've been enjoying the process so much. I'm enjoying finding inspiration in a different way. But once again, I hope you've seen in all of my inspiration pieces that I am using something as a guide, but then I'm turning it into my own. What can I do? How can I make it different? How can I make it feel like me? Because for me, that's part of the process of being an artist is finding an idea, figuring out how to make it your own, and then morphing it into art. To me, that is one of the pleasures that I have being a creative. And I enjoy the way that it makes my brain function. <laughs> it challenges me. It pushes me in different directions. I would have never ever done a concertina book because it was just too overwhelming. But Armed was something that I'm totally inspired by and just the endless possibilities, I am all about that. So grab a book from your shelf, get totally into it and find what, why you bought it in the first place and then head out in a discovery of your own. The journey will be so worth it, I promise. If you were inspired by today's video, please leave me a comment on what you truly found intriguing, if anything. <laughs> If not, please like, comment, and subscribe anyways. It will help my channel grow and I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.